Hi, my name is Kimberly Adams and I'm your host of the Daughters of Zion talk show. The Daughters of Zion is nestled in the beautiful sanctuary of Jesus People Church at 4400 Hickory Hill Road right here in Memphis. We have an awesome show for you this evening where we, we will be discussing the prophetess Miriam. Before we go any further, I'd like to introduce to you our distinguished guest for this evening. First, on my close left is Sister Jasmine Combs. Hello, everyone. Following her is Sister Kamitra Clark. Praise the Lord. And last but not least, Sister Dawn Bonner. Glory to God. Hello. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. Miriam is an awesome woman of God that we will find in Numbers uh, chapter 20. Um, as we can continue to read about her and understand that she was a prophet, the, the sister of Moses, the eldest sister of Moses. And she has so many different turns and twists in her life that I felt it was awesome that we'd be able to talk about her and see how she's grown and how she fell and how she continued to do what she did, but how we can learn from such an awesome woman of God. So first, I'm going to start with you, Sister Jasmine. Tell me one thing that stuck out about Miriam to you. She was a female prophetess um, in the Bible, especially back in the Old Testament. Females didn't get much recognition, and for her to be a prophetess, that says a lot, and it's very powerful that she was even acknowledged. And then I never knew Moses had a sister. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome that you said that because there are so many interesting intricate people in the Bible that we don't know and how they all tie into the big picture of what God has had for us. And Sister Kamicha, talk a little bit more about how women have always played a great role in the Bible but most people don't discuss them. Talk about that a bit. Well, I think women oftentimes do get looked, o looked over as being great women in the Bible, per se, that they're always talking about the men being the strongest, but we also have strong women in the Bible. And the Bible doesn't speak much about women being prophets, but it's still those women that stick out. Mm -hmm. And it's a representation of being a prophetess and a woman of God, and a woman that will show you how to be a woman in godly ways mm -hmm. so by her being a prophet is that pretty much everybody don't know about but we did find out about her that she did have an important role in the bible it's basically starting from moses being a baby mm -hmm. and her being the one who was his sister actually saving him from pharaoh being killed so she has played a very important role that i can see as a prophetess in the bible and sister don't talk about that being the big she's a big sister and saw her baby brother move out into the into the water and he, they were trying to save Moses from Pharaoh. Talk about how important that set the tone for her to becoming a leader my right God, then. My God, my God, wasn't she quick with it? Um, she, she knew exactly what to do and the right words to say. She didn't just sit there and say, that's my brother. She, she used, God gave her the words and sealed the words in her to allow the princess to be willing to bring not just a woman to nurse him, but a Hebrew woman, which in turn gave her the opportunity to go for her mother. It's a lot of, um, I can say myself, I can't say that God, I would have had those words to say. Yes. Yes. I probably would have said, don't Amen. kill her, baby. But she Amen. said that she calmly assessed the situation and handled it according, which shows her leadership skills moving forward. That is awesome that you make that point that we as women have to remember and we have a tendency to act emotionally. Mm -hmm. And yes. first thing come out yes. is our emotions. Oh, the baby. Oh, we, we we so emotional. But she was quick-witted, as you had mentioned, and knew exactly what to say at the right time. Sister Jasmine, talk about how it's important that we stay connected with God so God can give us the right things to say and we can use the Holy Spirit to guide us as opposed to our emotions. Yes, and it comes back to the Beth Cole voice. Um, Amen. I know you can feel yourself getting angry and you can hear your flesh, like, screaming out to act ugly and and then you hear this little still voice like you know that's not right you should stop listen to yourself and then Amen. that's the purpose of you're able to distinguish that voice of God when you have a relationship with him because you know God is warning me he's telling me don't do this Amen. and if you ignore it, you will get rebuked. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And you cannot ignore the voice of God because God only wants good for us. Mm -hmm. And Sister Kamitra, talk even more about that because how do we build that relationship with God? Because we say that and a lot of people haven't been to church, so we need to be able to expound upon that as well. How do you build a relationship? I know how to build a relationship with Johnny, but mm -hmm. what do I need to do to build a relationship with God? It's all about being intimate with God. It's all about 
putting aside that extra time with God Amen. because just like we spend time with other people, God wants his time first. Mm -hmm. His time is personal. And if we reach out to God as he is our Lord and our Savior in the head of our lives, there's no way that our relationship can go wrong. And he will not steer us in the wrong direction. So the importance of having that close relationship with God. It's, it's important for our spirits. It's important for our souls. It's important for us to grow in Christ. Mm -hmm. It's important to us to acknowledge who he is and who he is in our lives. That's Amen. awesome that you say. And Sister, Zon, uh, Sister Dawn, talk to the people, the women of that are watching, women of God, that really want to have that relationship, but they are still caught in that um, a situation where they have not sold out yet for God mm -hmm. and what do we need to do well how do we get over that hump to be sold mm -hmm. out enough so My now God. God speaks to us as opposed to everybody in the world for myself the best relationship I can have is with God it's with making the time to pray and to fast and to worship and to serve him because that's where all my help really comes from it's so easy for me to since i can see a human being physically to reach out and ask them for help but when i learned when i started coming to to bible study when i started coming to jesus people church reading my bible you don't understand how many times i've seen a bible almost to my knowledge all I'm 29, so for at least 25 years of my life, I've seen the Bible and recognized <laughs> right. the Bible. But it wasn't until I reached out and touched the Bible and started picking it up for myself and reading through it and getting this knowledge of what God did and how um, he used the vessels to play a key role that I understood that I need to pray. When you sit there and you read about Jesus taking the time to go to his um, his own quarters, go to his private place, Amen. go to his secret place so that he can work on their relationship with God and then you see Jesus being able to do all these works and when the um, disciples couldn't do it, he was like you haven't fasted. And some things you can only do through fasting and praying. You realize it's the, the formula. Mm -hmm. So so if you haven't sold out to God, Amen. it's your loss. And I don't want you to lose. I want you to have that best experience of your life and be able to sit there and say, I gave it 100% and know that you did the right thing. Um, because I can say when I can't call um, my daddy, I can call on Jesus and Amen. I can call on God and he answers. He sends somebody. I was sitting in traffic the other day with my vehicle messed up and I'm calling my mom and then I'm sitting over here like just taking the time to pray. God, just give me to the church. I got to make the 6 a.m. 6 p.m. prayer. And Sister Felicia turns around. That's God answering. Amen. I see him, his hand in my life. So I just want you to be able to have that too. And fasting and praying, I can't do it enough. Reading the Bible, I can't do it enough. Worshiping him, I can't do it enough. So I can talk about that. Amen. <laughs> amen. Well, you're talking about something good. So nothing's wrong with that. Amen. Uh, God is such an awesome God. And as we continue to look at Miriam, we have to look at the fact that after she did what she did to help Moses, she had to, at that point, even being the elder sister, had to take a back seat because God chose Moses to lead the people. So I want to kind of to talk a little bit, Sister Jasmine, on how that we have to be able to be firm in who we are, even if we have to take a back seat, even if we're it's not our time to be in front or we're not called to be in front, but still be able to work in a good position, knowing who we are and that God will elevate us. And that is very powerful to know who you are in. A lot of times people think the person who is chosen or the person who is in the spotlight is the most important person. And that's not true because yeah. there are a lot of people behind the scenes Amen. and taking that back seat that helps aid that person to do what it is Amen. that he is designed to do. And in the case of Moses, by Moses being the baby brother and Miriam being the elder, she felt like, God, why didn't you choose me? Like, Amen. I do just as much as he does. And God rebuked her for it. And it was a sense that she had to humble herself. And what I did like about Miriam is that she knew what she did wrong. Amen. And she accepted that. And she was like, this is my punishment. I have to take this. I was wrong. And admitting you're wrong, that's 
oh my gosh like that is <laughs> so hard for a lot of people to actually do is to take responsibilities for their own actions and Miriam humbled herself after that and she acted accordingly and she was still a great leader and an important role to the people of Israel. Amen <laughs> and you've opened up the door for us to discuss humility and Sister Kamitra I want you to speak about this because you are a leader you you run your own place your own business and, and your manager and everything so how do you have to remind yourself to remain humble in the position of leadership because you still got to tell people what to do mm -hmm. but you still got to be humble at the same time talk about that well it all stems from sometimes you have to put yourself in other people's shoes mm -hmm. and you have to say where well, I've been there with that where that person is because everybody might not be humble like me but believe me it takes uh, I think God has just gave me a spirit of a lot of patience. Amen. So I think that's what really helps me. It's like I'm a person that can just, you know, take a lot from somebody and I would not blow my cool Amen. at the same time. And people know that I'm humble. They know that I'm fair. They know I'm honest. Amen. And by me being in a position, it, it's like I balance everything out. So God has given me the gift, even though I am in management, I'm in leadership. It's all a part of being in leaders because everybody that's a leader may not be humble as I am. Amen. Some of them might be a little agitated. Some of them might be a little aggressive. But at the same time, you have to be humble because my crew also know that I am a servant of God. They know that I go to church. Amen. So at the same time, I'm still had to, I still have to put on Jesus while I'm Amen. at work. Work at the same time and still keep my composure and still be professional so they can be able to come to me in whatever the situa situation may be. I can't, you know, be impatient. I can't go off and things like that. So being humble has really, like, kind of changed me because I used to then be humble. I used to be real rebellious. Wow. You know, in a sense, and God has set me back and set me down and let me know that, you know, sometimes you're going to have to sit down and you're gonna have to watch and let somebody else be in the forefront because you know I used to be the ones think I used to know everything right you see what I'm saying but I hate to take it to God God set me down said you don't know everything sit down my sister sit down my child because being humble is the best thing in the world to be because it said God will exalt those that are humble themselves yes, so if we be humble and by memory being humble it lets her know it, it takes a it, it describes the character that you have Amen. when you you will humble yourself and take a back seat in the things that God wants to reveal to you because you don't always have to be the head honcho. Amen. And this, you know, being humble is just a great thing. And by Miriam being humble, it really is an example of us being humble within ourselves. That's awesome. And you know what? You brought out something that I want Sister Dawn to speak to about um, making sure that no matter who we are, we are women of God and we always have to put Jesus on the as a forefront because people looking at us so they want to see you know oh is she really a woman of God you know they always want to test you is she really yep. delivered but you know we, as we all are true believers we are who we are and because yeah. we are God we are servants of God you know what's in us gonna come out of yeah. us so tell them talk about how that we have to always be mindful that yes you know people are watching but at the same time we're we have, we're sold out for God so they can look on it they want to. They're going to see the Jesus the man. in me. See the Jesus in me. Um, touching on that subject, when you're in the body of Christ and the people on the outside, the people of the world, it's like they, it's easy for them to use their reason to not become a part of the body of Christ mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they like to sit there and say well they're not even sold out themselves yes. so I have to make sure that I take my time to stay in the spirit Amen. at all times because I don't want to I don't want that blood on my hands. I don't want to be the reason why somebody um, doesn't come into the body of Christ Amen. and serve God appropriately. So I try my best I try my best to make sure that when I'm interacting with people, it's always in the spirit of love because this, this, this what you do as a Christian. You walk in his path and that's what he would do. It's a lot of situations where that have come to me and I had an opportunity to 
set them straight, but I have to remember that they're my elder. And I'm still working on that. I'm still working on my rendition of how treating my elder, what that means. But I want to always be a woman of God first. That's the hat Amen. that I need to wear. So that's how I need to address situations as a woman of God. And that's the important part is that it's of God. Because any person could be a, a grown female mm -hmm. but it takes a, a special person to be a woman and then it takes a really special person to be a woman of God. Amen. Yeah, that's awesome <laughs> and then you mm -hmm. broke that thing down <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and we need to be able to understand the different aspects of woman, women, womanhood and how we have to be multifaceted in so many ways. We have to be able to take the set back seat, take the leadership role, remain humble, remember that people are watching. And, and I think throughout the process, Miriam had to go through so many different areas, had to take the leadership role for Moses. Then she had to take the back seat. Then she had to become humble. And she was so upset about Moses' wife and he didn't, mm -hmm. she didn't want her to make Marry him, and who? Why? Why is it? Do you think, Jasmine, that we just always got to tell our opinion, and how do we <laughs> fix that in a godly way? Because for some reason, we feel like our thoughts are God's thoughts, and that's not true. Because God's thoughts are not our thoughts, and His ways are not our ways. So, talk about how do we get close enough to God to know that what you think ain't always the right thing to be thinking, and we don't need mm -hmm. to talk all the time. I speak for myself on that one. I used to be the type that, let's say the first thing that came to my mind Thank about you. any situation or it just doesn't even matter. And a lot of times I would think I'm saying it in my head, but it comes out loud. <laughs> and then that becomes another problem. So in order to fix that, I first had to find God. And in seeking him, I spent several times alone with God. I had to separate myself from everyone else in the world who I thought were friends or a man who I thought I loved, even from family. And Amen. I had to just get with me and God. I had to first find out who I was. Amen. And then I wanted to know, God, who do you want me to be? Help me. I need help. Amen. Please help me. Lord, I know what I'm thinking is not right. I know that I say things that come off rude and hurts people's feelings and I really don't even care. I should care because Amen. I would want someone to care about me. So I prayed a lot. I didn't know much about fasting. I tried. I, it was the thought that I tried to fast and God knew what I was trying to do before <laughs> I learned. But it takes time and you actually have to want to change. Amen. Um, God can give you the hints. He can show you the signs. He can even physically tell you, Jasmine, don't do that. But if I don't want to, if I don't want to listen to the man, if I don't want to listen to God, if I don't want to change, it's not going to happen. So you have to want to. And then being able to understand who God is and what he do and how Thank he you. works. Amen. And when you're able to see that, it makes it easier. Like, okay, I can distinguish I wouldn't have got out of that situation if I didn't walk into the meeting and say, God, hold my tongue, direct my words, Amen. let me respond as if you would respond in this situation Amen. versus coming in like, I already know she done made me mad, so I'm going to tell her piece of my mind and you finna mm -hmm. get it too because you ain't just <laughs> did Amen. nothing to me in my favor. So it really takes time and prayer. It doesn't matter where you are. You can pray wherever, anywhere. Amen. However, God hears you. So that that really plays a part. I'm always praying. Amen. You got to keep praying. You got to keep praying. And Sister Kamitra, speak to the fact that we have to learn to submit to the Spirit of God. And, mm. and what uh, somebody messed up women, especially women of color of 2018, <laughs> that when you hear the word submit, our flesh crawl. So, but as women of God, we know better. So, because we know better, we have to teach, we have to reach, and we have to let people understand that it's a better way. So, talk about the submissiveness that we have to always hold, and it's for God. The submissiveness, I think, that women think is like we're being forced to do something mm -hmm. instead of being asked to do something. So in a sense, submissive is being submissive. Just submit to whatever the thing is. You know, when God wants us to be submissive, it's all it's allowing him to be able to teach us and allow him to tell us what to do Amen. in a sense that 
it makes us want to do it and it doesn't matter like well I'm gonna not I'm well I'm not gonna do that I don't want to do that I, I don't feel like doing it it's not about us we have to take ourselves out of, e out of the equation and think about it it's all about God and God wants us to do his will in our lives it's not our will but it is God's will Amen. and being submissive is really pretty much being obedient to God Amen. pretty much you know in a sense you know we can't just think about where well, I'm doing this for sister so and so so or whoever if the person comes to you in a godly way and a person is telling you or asking you because they're not going to tell you anything. They're going to pretty much going to ask you in a godly way. We can't take offense to what they're telling us. We have to just be submissive mm -hmm. because if we can't be submissive to the to the, the Herman person, how are we going to be, be submissive to God mm -hmm. at the, in the same time? So being submissive to God really helps us and it grows us in the body of Christ because God might want us to, you know, get baptized. He might want us to, you know, pray for somebody or whatever the case may be and we so you know entangled with our emotions and don't want to do it for this certain person but God is telling us to be submissive to me and I will grow you and elevate you mm -hmm. that's so awesome and we have to remember that we are just earthly vessels that God has taken and place here to be used for God. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, we've been used by so many other folks yes. <laughs> and sat back there and got used for years and didn't do anything. But then when God wants to use us, we rebel mm -hmm. and, and God is not pleased. So when we walk with the spirit of love and we supposed to have that at all yes. times. And I think that's, that is such a pull for us, especially as women, because we have to deal with so many different aspects mm -hmm. and people feel like like womanhood or being a woman is oftentimes a weak state and so we feel like love weakens us but in our weakness God is made strong mm -hmm. so it's so important that we stay submissive and open to him and be able to listen to him and be able to work within the confines of what he expects you know what you also may mention Sister Jasmine I'm going to have Don talk about how um, I don't know if you or can meet one of y'all said something about um how Miriam ultimately was submissive and understood she was humble, but she also accepted the punishment and she repented mm -hmm. of her ways. And Sister Dawn, I want you to talk a little bit about that. How important is it that we just say, okay, I did it? <laughs> and it, that is extremely important Why to black take people responsibility, <laughs> to take responsibility for your actions. Amen. It's part of repenting. And that was the difference was that Aaron repented for his sins. Amen. That's Moses it. prayed on his sister's behalf. And her punishment was she had received leprosy. She had to be quarantined and she accepted that. That meant that she had to be apart, um, separated mm -hmm. from. And she took that. And a lot of people, they don't want to admit that they were wrong. Amen. It's like it's, it's part of... A weakness. It's like it drains their energy when being wrong merely sits there and says, "I need assistance with this so that I can get it right." Amen. And um, it's like people don't like assisting help. And I can say that if I'm wrong, and it may not be immediately that I realize that I'm wrong, but if I feel that I'm wrong, I'm going to apologize or I must try to make it right, or I'm going to at least acknowledge that okay, that was me. Sometimes I may not, I, I receive my punishment knowing that, okay, I'm an adult and it's been a long time since I got a whooping. Mm -hmm. So I know that's one thing I'm not going to get is a whooping. Mm -hmm. So I can take anything else and handle anything else with grace and knowing that God's going to protect me and, and he's going to at least give the person that's punishing me maybe a softer heart. Mm -hmm. um, because he's in control of everything. So if he wanted me to get it right, he would have... Um, put me in that way. So it's all a learning process. That's how I view. Amen. And we have to Amen. remember that we're all learners and we have to recognize that as long as you're on earth, you're going to learn something. You're going to be able to grow. You're going to have an opportunity to get better. You're going to have an opportunity, not just to change, but to transform. Because one thing about change, you change for a few minutes and you can pop back to your old <laughs> self. So we yeah. want to transform that person and become a new being. And to deal with leprosy, we've all been ostracized at some point. 
it, Amen. put to the corner, set aside, left there to, for dead. And we had to deal with that. And during that time is when we have to learn to just lean on God. And let God say, okay, now that you're separated from everybody else, let me work on you so I can grow you. Mm -hmm. So we can put you back into society and you can really do my will. Sister Jasmine, we're running out of time, but I want you to be able to speak to the younger women out there that's looking like, hey, she she not but the same mm -hmm. age as I am. And I'm watching this show and she's on TV and she's talking about God and she's changed her life. You're an immediate mentor. What would you say to the younger women who are trying to get out of the they know that club thing not working. They know out there in those streets are not working. What would you say that you learned from Miriam that you would want to give to the other women? From Miriam, she wanted to do what she wanted to do. She wanted to be on the scene and everybody look at me. You do not need the attention from Amen. the wrong people. Amen. You're trying to please the world. You're trying to keep up with the the guys, you know, with the fancy cars and the bling bling and the girls with the bodies and the things that guys like to look at. Sweetheart, you are so much more than just your image. An image can easily be taken away from someone, Amen. but your heart and your spirit will last forever and go Thank with you. you wherever you are. So focus mainly on yourself and you're going to lose a lot of people along the way and those people weren't meant for you in the first place. God will show you who those people are that you don't need and he'll show you the people. He will send you the people that you do need. Let Amen. me rephrase that. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to lose those people. Their time is up. They serve their purpose. You will learn what God wanted you to see. That way you can move forward and hold on to that. And it makes you wise. It makes you more knowledgeable on how to get through life. And just know that it's okay. And if you ever need anyone to talk to, I'm at Jesus People Church at 4400 Hickory Hill Road. <laughs> oh, Lord. Just, Call Jasmine. <laughs> but, no, we thank you because that was powerful. Sister Kamisha, give me one great point that you want to let somebody know about Miriam. Miriam. <clears throat> The thing about Miriam, uh, the important thing about Miriam is that she realized that what she done was wrong and she was out of place. So sometimes we have to put ourselves in her place and know that we have to stay in the in the place that God puts us in Amen. so we can be elevated in God. Sister Dom, quickly. Okay. Um, one thing. Even after everything was said and done, Micah still acknowledged that she too was a prophet that God sent to assist. So yeah, I think that was powerful. She's awesome. They, they recognize who you are in the midst of everything, no matter what's going on. Be strong in who you are in God. And understand that you have to find yourself a Bible-based church. You have to be around people of God that you can rub elbows with that will teach you and bring you along. Amen. We all started off out there in the world. No yes. one came with the Bible in their mouth <laughs> okay. knowing every scripture. <laughs> but we studied, we learned, we, we put away things that were childish and became into an awesome situation with God so this is another opportunity for you to join to be a part of the body of Christ we can't say enough about how we want you because you're here for a reason we thank you for watching and we hope we bless you be blessed <laughs>